Hello and welcome back to another Screaming Delkins guide of how to make fishing tackle basically isn't it? Right, what am I going to do today? Uh, basically these are spinner blade dead bait trolling traces of course for pike fishing uh, I use them uh, at the back of the boat uh, trolling for pike I also use them uh, for spinning and about sink and draw uh, with dead baits so we've got a few functions, few purposes, uh, and I'm going to show you how to make them. Right. So first thing we're going to look at is, of course, the components you're going to need. Yeah. Uh, so what I like to use, of course, is, uh, is this is Berkeley. It's a nylon coated wire trace. That's twenty pound. Um, there's other ones that's thirty pound. Again, it's your own preference, whatever you want to use, 20, 30 pound. But it's nylon coated, must be nylon coated, and not your standard uh, seven strand, because that'll just kink, uh, and then it, it's basically useless. Yeah, so make sure you get the, um, the uh, nylon coated. Uh, of course, you're going to need hooks. So, you're going to need your hooks. What we're going to use today are, of course, you see there, these are size 4s, yeah, and they're semi barbless, semi barbless treble. So, you're going to need two of them. There we go. Then, you're going to need, of course, to go with the wire, these crimps, make sure you get the right size. Yeah, so your, fire, uh, your wire, basically nylon coated wire, fits twice uh, through uh, the crimp, so make sure you get the right size. Uh, these ones are about about 1.8 mil, 1.6, 1.8, .8, uh, just enough for 20, 30 pound uh, nylon coated wire trace there. Uh, right, so uh, what else we need is is what I've got in here. You can just see them in there. There's just a few. Some spinner blades and some clevises. So spinner blades here. There's some uh, floral red ones. And there's some hammered, basically, nickel ones. And you've got some clevises. Basically, they work, work in conjunction with the spinner blades. They're size 2, they're size 4s. Again, I'll show you what we do with them very shortly. Also, you're going to need is some little 8 mil, uh, basically plastic uh, plastic beads. They're plastic, multicolored, uh, of course, all different colours. Uh, and I've got some smaller ones there, which I'll show you when we knock this rig up very shortly. Other things you're going to need is swivels. In this case, as you can see there, they're ball bearing swivels. Yeah, I would opt for ball bearing swivels when trawling. Um, not really. You don't really need them if you're just going to be spinning with them, uh, or spinning with them, or the sink and draw method. Uh, but if you're going to be trolling, either float trolling, dead bait trolling off the back of a boat, uh, or on the downrigger, yeah, you definitely need ball bearing swivels. Otherwise, things can go horribly wrong with your main line, your real line. Super. Right. What else you need? This is without preference if you want to use any. Yeah. A little bit of shrink tube there. Yeah. All different sizes. Again, black. Black shrink tube. Lovely job there, you can use that if you want. Tools we're going to need, a pair of wire cutters, these are nice little ones, I've just got off a car boot sale, yep, about a quid, and these are my crimping pliers, they're not actually crimping pliers as such, it's just again, I've picked these up off a car boot sale there, as you can see, that's just for crimping the wire with the, uh, the, the, the little metal crimps. Right then, so what are we going to do? Let's make one then. So first thing first, of course, you need your wire. So again, again, it's on personal preference. I'm going to go for about 18 inches there. Again, just clip that off with my wire cutters. So I've got 18 inches of nylon coated wire trace. Then first thing you do, of course, is the first um, treble hook, but before I do that, get myself a crimp. Just thread. We can do it from here. 
Thread your crimp on. First crimp on there. Okay. And your first hook. So this is the end treble. Then fold it back over and back through the crimp. I'm going to have to do it over here because I can't see that far. My eyes aren't good these days. So again, just fold it back over like so. Just push the tag end through so you've got a little bit of tag end there coming through and then just pull it down. Pull it down nice. I don't have it too tight, I have it so it can still move. So you've got just a small loop there, enough for the hook to move. And then of course, with your crimping tool of your own choice, we just crimp that tray, uh, crimp that down, like so. And there's your end one ready. So again, there's the first, the first of two treble hooks. Then, second treble, thread that on. And then you want that to sit, basically, them two to sit down the side of your dead bait. Funnily enough, I've got a couple here, some Morrison specials, uh, just for, um, basically, purposes of this video, but they will get used next week when I go pike fishing. So, basically what you do, you want to sit about there, okay, if you can see that. Put it on the top one. So I want them about that long. Bit of a stink. And then you're gonna basically, oh, it's a, not a whipping knot, it's like a knotless knot on the treble hook. This you're gonna go round once. You can see that. So under the back side of the hooks, pull it tight like so. And then you're just gonna one two, three, and then back through the eye of the treble, and then just pull it tight, but make sure you don't kink the, uh, the trace wire. So there we go, you can stick a bit of shrink tube on there if you want, yeah. So basically they're the, the two hooks that are going to sit in the side of the dead bait, and uh, they're the ones that actually hook the pike itself. Then, which I forgot to mention is the next part. What I use now, and it serves two purposes basically, is what I've got here, if you can see that, it's a mackerel hook. Just a tub of mackerel hooks there. Yep, you see the size of that. And that's gonna sit on there. I'll show you what that does in a minute. So, with the mackerel hook, again, this is a knotless knot. You can use shrink tube here as well if you want, but to save doing that today, I'm just going to thread this on, like so. I'm going to get that, because that's going to sit in the mouth of the dead bait. So, they're going to be sat on the side. I want the hook round right at the lip, yeah, about the tight length of the eye there. Okay, and then I'm just going to whip that using the knotless knot as you would with carp hooks, making a, making a carp rig. So again, one, two, three, four, five, and then back through the eye. And there's the knotless knot, there's that whipped on. So as you can see, it's starting to look like the rig now. See how that's popped up a bit? You can put a bit of shrink tube on there. So what I'm going to do, get a little bit of shrink tube out. A little bit of shrink tube, I don't know, it's about three mil or something. Cut a bit off, I don't know, about an inch. Thread that onto your, onto your trace. That goes over the eye of the mackerel hook. And then it'll sit there and of course we'll shrink that down later on. Okay. So there we go. There's that bit. Right. Next bit is your coloured 8mm beads. 
Okay, so I've just got a few here. Firstly, I've got an orange one. Just slide them straight on, like so. There's one. Green one, just all different colours. It's your own personal preference here. Just a few beads on there. Pink one. Yellow one again, these are high vis. Okay, so you've got, again, just your beads there, sat above the mackerel hook. Then, I'm going to put some smaller ones on. First, it's a, a glow-in-the-dark, oval-shaped one. Again, you can get these from, of course, tackle shops. <coughs> Excuse me, eBay. Uh, hobby shops is a good one for these beads, nice and cheap there. And other places like that. So again, there's just the oval one on. Then I'm going to put just a couple of small ones. These are about 4mm oval. Again, glow-in-the-dark ones. Yeah. Need to be charged by light, of course, the glow. Like so. So there's your beads on there. Then I'm going to need a clevis. I'm just going to put a size 4 on here, basically that's a clevis, if you can see it's got two holes in the end, if you can see that there, little metal clevis, and two holes, that slides of course onto your trace, so you put one end on first, then grab yourself a spinner blade, yeah, again these are uh, fluoro ones, Floral coat, he got these off eBay, I think it was about, I don't know, about three quid for 10, 15, 20, can't remember. Slide that onto the crevice, then through the second hole of the clevis, and that slides down like so. And of course, there's your spinner blade. Then, of course, to finish off, we've got to put a swivel on the other end. But well, firstly, of course, I'll need a crimp. Slide your crimp on first. Again, my eyes are going bad. Crimp, then want a ball bearing swivel. Again, there's a ball bearing swivel, if you can see that. Oop, dropping them everywhere. That's a little ball bearing swivel. You can pick them up in tackle shops, of course. I would advise you strongly recommend them on these rigs unless you're using it for uh, sink and draw or spinners which i'll show you them in a minute and of course through your swivel loop it back over back on itself through the crimp again just make sure your tag end comes sticking out the tag end is stuck out there oh. if you can see that again Pull it tight. Again, just give it a little bit of free movement there. And then, of course, bring that up using your crimping tool. Just five. Again, don't go too tight with that. You don't want to go through the wire. So basically, there we go. That is for trolling dead baits. Of course, I'll shrink that shrink tube down very shortly. You've got semi barbless trebles on there. So, again, the barbed one sticks in your dead bait. I'll just take one out just to show you how this works. Yep. So, again, that's just a herring, full herring, guts the lot. So, again, the, uh, the mackerel hook that goes through the lip and it serves two purposes this. So through the, the bottom lip of the, of the fish and out the top like that. So right, that serves two purposes now. Once it ke keeps the fish in a straight line, as opposed to just the treble stuck in the side of it, you won't lose your fish. And of course it takes the weight on the troll, they don't keep falling off everywhere. Then, of course, you get your trebles and basically just nick these in, find the... Uh, Find the barbed one. There we go. Nick them in the side of the in the side of the fish, and that's it, ready to go. Again, the faster you troll, the more it spins. 
again it's just that little added bit of extra added attraction for the pike yep might trigger a take you just never know until you've used it so there we go that is the dead bait you can troll that behind the, uh, the boat on the float of course yeah again with it being the mackerel hook that keeps the fish in a straight line yeah it also holds the fish on of course all the weight of that dead bait is on that mackerel hook and not in these uh, two trebles on the side otherwise of course it'll go off to one side and they usually fall off and you go through more dead baits uh, than the quota of the Spanish trawlers in the North Sea. So there we go, that's the dead bait trolling rig. Or you can use this one as well for spinning. You can use that one, of course, downrigger, uh, float trolling, or of course, a sink and draw. Again, casting out with that mackerel hook in its lid it's going to take the weight of the cast you're not going to be losing dead baits left right and centre here's one I made uh, we well, made this in Sweden but it's exactly the same principle but instead of having a trace on there it's just got the snap link and again what you can do with that is uh, grab yourself a lure Grab yourself a lot or one on the top there. It's just a, uh, a Rapala shad wrap. Yep. Again, with your snap link, and get it on. And of course, spinning, trolling with these as well. And it's got that little bit of added attraction there, the spinner blade. Oh, that's just one again I made in Sweden. Used it yeah, a few times. And again, a slight like little bit of extra added attraction. Again, that one. And of course, we've got the dead bait one. Lovely. Right, there we go. Right, see you next time on, um, we'll make some stingers I think the next one, lovely, right, turn the camera off, let's survive man.